Hey everyone, I'm Jim Fitzpatrick. Thanks so much for joining me today. The average loan amount for new and used vehicles decreased. That's right, I said decreased in the third quarter, according to new data from Experian. On today's show, we are diving into their Q3 State of the Automotive Finance Market Report. To learn more, joining us now is Melinda Zabritsky, who's the Senior Director of Automotive Financial Solutions for Experian. Thank you so much, Melinda, for joining us on the show. Great, thanks, Jim. Always a pleasure to be here. Sure. So. What were some of the key findings in the report for Q3 in addition to the fact that uh, loan amounts were decreasing? Definitely. That was one of the big findings for Q3 was that decrease in the new loan amount. Um, it really followed what we saw happen with used loan amounts in the second quarter of this year. So it was good to see it come down for new. Uh, payments are still a little higher from where they were last year. Uh, but the car, the new car payment has been steadily falling throughout the year. So, so that was definitely good to see. And we continue to see consumers opting for shorter term loans. Mm. And also finally, one of the big things, of course, credit unions maintaining the largest share for used lending. <laughs> Very interesting. Wow. So shorter term loans at a time that sell prices and average prices of cars, both new and used are up so much. And yet the term of the loans are shorter. That walk me through that. Yeah, people tend to think that with the growth in loan amounts, you would see longer term loans. Yeah. But a lot of this growth in shorter term loans is being driven by the higher interest rates. Um, also, especially for new, the incentives that we saw in the so far this year have all been really on 48 month loans. Uh, but we've also seen across all lender types, we have seen shorter term loans represent a larger portion. And a lot is because those are going to have lower interest rates. So I think a lot of it are just consumers looking to pay uh, the least amount in total interest payments. Okay. And um, the average vehicle loan amounts decreasing. What does this mean for the automotive industry as a whole? Is this a positive sign that, uh, that things are stabilizing? It is. I really think it's good news for consumers, um, again, especially on the new car side. When we had such inventory constraints, we saw loan amounts just hit record highs. Transactions were, were well over MSRP. So yes, I really see the decrease in these loan amounts is really signaling that availability is in, in good shape. And on the used vehicle side, we've seen the average vehicle values come down a little. So that's also helped bring the used loan amounts down. Do you think that leasing is gonna be coming back to make a to make a big splash or, I mean, with the cost of cars being so much and the shorter term loans, is that a perfect bridge to more leasing? Well, leasing rates have still remained only around 20%. Uh, what's interesting though with the leasing is we're also seeing a little bit of an increase in shorter term leases. Uh, 36 is still the most common, uh, but we did start seeing more 24 month leases. Hmm. And then on the loan side, even though we're seeing more consumers go for shorter, 72 months is still the most common loan term for both new and used. Okay, okay. And captives still make up the majority of the total finance market share? They did for the third quarter. And a lot of that again was really due to the incentives. When we looked at the new car share, captives hit just a peak of 60%. Hmm. And of course, Leasing is primarily done by the captives. So when we look at total financing, it did push captives into that number one position. Was there anything else that surprised you about the findings? You know, it's good to not be surprised. Um, <laughs> the market's been very consistent this year. Like I said, we've we've slowly seen those loan amounts come down. Um, payments have, have actually on the new side, payments have been coming down this year as well. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the Q3 findings were very consistent with what we saw for the other quarters this year. Sure. And here we are in December of 2023. What do you, what, what, what's your forecast for the first half of 2024? I wouldn't be surprised to see it too different from what we saw the first quarter of this year. Um, our payments, I believe, will stay right around that seven, you know, 730 or so for new, mm -hmm. you know, mid 500s for used. Um, probably hope to see that loan amount come down again a little bit as well, but rates are still high. So we're still seeing, uh, you know, we're still seeing the payments climb a little. And uh, of course, terms, I would expect terms to be pretty stable as long as we have the rates where they are. Hmm. And um, in terms of uh, credit scores, are we seeing those negatively impacted at all through all of this craziness? 
We actually haven't. Um, we continue to see consumer credit uh, continue to increase as more consumers are falling into our prime credit tiers. Uh, credit scores have been climbing for, uh, you know, for the average credit score of people buying both new and used. Um, but we've also seen fewer subprime consumers in the market. So that's also contributing to just seeing the average credit score of who the consumers who are obtaining loans has been steadily increasing. Hmm. That's great news. That's awesome. Yeah. Melinda Zabriskie, Senior Director of Automotive Financial Solutions for Experience. Thank you so much for stopping by the show. We very much appreciate it. I know that our viewers will get a lot out of your visit with us. So thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you.